What's up guys, Alec on Kira here. And it's a shame that I have to make this video, but it looks like we're not quite out of the woods yet here in terms of this global pandemic. Cases of COVID-19 are expected to surge in the United States in the coming weeks, especially as we move through the fall and the winter. And they've already begun to spike pretty rapidly across the European Union, according to several recent reports that I've read. So in light of that, it would be prudent to plan for your gym to be closing again and possibly closing very soon. I've actually gotten multiple comments from subscribers just this past week saying that the gyms have already been closed in their countries. If any business is going to be shut down for this and get shut down again, it's going to be gyms. Remember that. So if you can swing it, it might seriously be time to start considering investing in a home gym. And if you need some ideas on how to go about getting that process started, then check out my latest article published on my website called The Home Gym Starter Kit, which I'll link below in the description. Given how volatile and unpredictable everything is right now, it really seems like that is the route that you should go at this point if you're able to. But I know that not everyone has the space for that or the money for that. So barring that, I've decided to put together a solid home workout plan, or at least a mostly home workout plan, that's going to buy you at least two or three months of productive work and allow you to still make good progress during that time, even without access to a gym. Now, the idea here is to keep the required equipment very minimal and make it so that you can still work out at home or just out in a field or outside, something like that something where you don't need access to a gym. So in this case, I've really tried to limit it to just a set of resistance bands and some weight plates and then, you know, ancillary stuff like a pull-up bar and a dipping belt. But it's important to know that because of that, because of these limitations, this is not an indefinite training plan. We're really just making the best of a bad situation with something like this. If you are looking though for an optimal long-term plan and you know that you'll still have access to a gym for the foreseeable future, or you have a home gym, then you should check out the training templates on my website, which are linked below as well. But so the focus here with this home workout plan is mostly going to be on a lot of body weight exercises. And we're going to use the weight plates and the bands that we have available to increase the external resistances here as well as you become stronger, especially. But we'll also be relying heavily on manipulating density here as a form of progression. And we'll also be using a lot of explosive work as well, things that don't necessarily require all that much additional weight. So anyway, though, this plan, because of those things, this plan really isn't for beginners. It's designed for serious lifters in the intermediate to advanced stage of training. And you need to actually have pretty damn good relative strength to make a program like this worthwhile. Now, I've also linked some pretty good resistance bands in the description as well, along with a doorway pull-up bar, just in case you don't have access to that, because you will need one for this program. I don't recommend buying the one ones that just attach to the door frame via pressure because I've seen too many of those come undone on too many occasions to have any trust in them. And you don't want to fall and smash your head onto the floor, especially as you're getting tired and especially if you have extra weight strapped onto you. So the one that I've linked below here does require some screws to be put into the door frame, but that should not be too big of a deal if you're serious about this training program and if you're serious about maintaining and improving your gain. So keep all that in mind. And with that, let's take a look at the training plan. All right, so we have a four day per week upper lower split here. Now, you should train two days in a row with this program, followed by one or two days of rest. So for example, that means you could do upper body session one on Monday, lower body session one on Tuesday, rest on Wednesday, upper body session two on Thursday, lower body session two on Friday, and then rest on Saturday and Sunday. And then you repeat the micro cycle starting again the following week. It's pretty straightforward. As you can see, you are going to be doing a lot of push-ups of different varieties, a lot of chin-ups, a lot of lunges, and some good old-fashioned sprinting and jumping. And that's really the meat and potatoes of the thing. If you don't like those sorts of exercises, then this isn't going to be the plan for you because you're not going to put out the effort that's required to make progress here. But I truly believe that this sort of a training program is good for most meatheads because the fact is a lot of you guys 
do not move around enough. And I was guilty of that for a long time myself as well. But the shit that we do in the gym doesn't make up for the lack of running and jumping. And those things should be done and they need to be done, especially for optimal health, optimal long-term health, and optimal functionality. You just have to break yourself in appropriately, especially as it comes to sprinting, and you'll be fine. I, I know someone is going to chime in here and tell me that this is a reckless recommendation because I'm prescribing it for so many people and for whatever reason sprinting is considered to be some kind of a super dangerous activity and it's not without risk obviously I'll, I'll concede to that but tell me what is more dangerous sprinting and maybe tweaking a hamstring at some point down the line or being in such piss poor shape overall that the act of sprinting itself represents some kind of overly dangerous scenario for your body because I'm inclined to say that it's the latter here, in which case you should probably rectify that or you're not really in good shape, no matter what you might tell yourself. Sprinting is a primal, natural, and intuitive activity and to lack the capacity to even be able to do it at all it's a scary thought to me personally, and I would never let that happen. So just be sure to start off slow here and break yourself in over the course of a few weeks and you'll probably be fine. And with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at some of the training sessions now, starting here with upper body day one. This session kicks off with the plyometric push-up. Now the main thing here is that you want to keep a rhythm going from rep to rep and knock out all of your reps in an unbroken fashion here. Be sure to go for maximal power and maximal explosiveness with every single rep that you do, maximal aggression on every single rep, and be sure as well to rest an adequate amount of time in between sets. You want to stay as explosive as possible here on every set that you do. Next up is the banded push-up. Now these are actually deceptively fucking difficult with the heavy bands. And in spite of the fact that it seems like this should be a triceps dominant exercise because of the bands, the chest activation is actually incredibly high, possibly even higher than just using straight weight, which really surprised me, honestly. So here though, you'll do a density block. You'll start off with 10 minutes and you'll do as many reps as possible during those 10 minutes. You'll Repeat that 10 minutes again the following week and you'll try to get more total reps the second go around. The week after that, week three, you will increase the duration of the density block to 12 minutes. And then in week four, you'll try to beat the rep total that you hit in week three. And then you can repeat in this fashion until you get to anywhere from a 16 to a 20 minute density block. So that would take anywhere from eight to 12 weeks right there just to do that. And then at that point, once you've completed a 20 minute density block, if you wanted to go that high, then you could just double up the bands and you could start the process all over again. So you could really work the push up like this for a very long time if you wanted to and still create overload and still make good progress. And you'll do the exact same thing with the close grip chin up as you just did with the banded push up. Here for the chin up, you will need that weight plate at least eventually. Now, most of you will want to probably start off with body weight only for this exercise as the close grip is significantly more difficult than a regular grip chin up and the biceps really get fatigued and really tire out pretty quickly here. But once you've knocked out a 16 or so minute density block and accrued a few hundred repetitions in a session, then you can go ahead and add a 10 pounder or a 25 pounder to the exercise, whatever you happen to have on hand. And from there, just do it all over again. Now the one arm plank is fucking hard, much, much harder than a regular plank, but also much more beneficial. It incorporates aspects of anti-extension, just like any plank does, but it also incorporates aspects of anti-rotation as well. So for here, you'll want to start off with about 20 seconds per side and increase the duration from there. If you get to a point where you can do four rounds of 40 seconds per side, then go ahead and put a plate on your back and start the process over. 
And finally, we finish up with a quad set here for the shoulders. Now, the word quad here has nothing to do with the quadriceps. It just indicates the fact that we're pairing, supersetting four exercises in a row here. And this one is going to burn. So you start off here holding a 10 pounder or a 25 pound plate, whatever you have, start off with the rear delt flies and basically go to failure on that. Then move to a lateral raise and do the same thing then move to a front raise and do the same thing, and then finally finish up with an overhead press. And that's one set. After that, you'll rest for maybe 30 to 60 seconds, and then you'll attack it again. And you keep going in this fashion until you get to at least 30 reps per exercise. Now, some exercises will get wrapped up quicker than others, and that's fine. But from that point, you can work your way up to 40 reps per exercise, and then 50 reps per exercise, and even 60 reps per exercise. And I don't know, if you wanna keep going at that point you can but that would be a lot of freaking reps so eventually it would be better to switch to a slightly heavier plate here if possible and now on to session two, which is lower body session one. Here we kick things off with a weighted jump. I like to perform these just like a regular standing vertical jump, but with some extra weight added onto the movement. And you can do this like this jump like this pretty much forever. And it's always going to have some level of value for you, just like performing an unloaded vertical jump will always have some level of value for you. But if you have multiple weights that you can rotate through every few weeks, Weeks, then that's even better. It just depends on how many plates you have on hand or how many plates that you're willing to buy to do this program. Either way though, take a normal jump stance here with the plates held at your sides, hit the bottom, and then I like to pause for a second or two in the bottom to eliminate some of the stretch reflex and use more starting strength to get myself going. And then from there, explode back up to the top with a maximal effort and maximal aggression on every single jump. Make sure you land nice and solidly, then reset and get ready for the next jump. Now, be sure to rest a few minutes in between sets here so that you can give it your all with every rep and so that you stay explosive and powerful with every rep. Next up is the reverse lunge. Now here, we're going to do basically the same thing as we did with the banded push-ups the day before. We're going to do a density block. So for this, just use whatever weight that you have available and knock out as many reps as you can in 10 minutes. You should try to get within roughly two to three reps of failure every time that you do a set here. Now that can be tough to gauge on a lunge, but your legs will be burning pretty good. So you'll have a better idea what you're actually doing. It. But then get to failure, rest briefly, and then get after it again. And as you move through the weeks, as you move through the program from week to week, try to get more total reps in. And then once you've done that a couple times, you can increase the duration of the density block by a couple minutes here and there, just to give yourself more time to get in even more reps. And eventually, you can add more weight as well if you have it available. And then after the lunges, you're gonna finish up the session with a superset of glute bridges and banded good mornings. Now, for the bridges here, I recommend holding every rep at the top for at least five seconds, but you could do 10 seconds or 15 seconds or even 20 if you wanted to. It'll make the set take a really long time, but that is where a lot of the value with this exercise lies, holding the top of the rep and really just focusing on flexing the glutes while you're up there. This exercise is always really more about quality anyway. And in recent years, people have often started trying to go too heavy with it because it's become popular. But when they do that, they really lose the beneficial effect that it offers in the first place. So lowering the weight like this, being forced to lower the weight like this can actually be a good thing on this exercise. Just focus on feeling the glutes burn here and do as many clean reps as you can. At least 20 in a set. Do more if you can, whatever. The total rep count doesn't really matter here so much as the fatigue that you're able to create in the glutes does. That's really what we're going for here is accumulating fatigue in those muscles. And then after the bridges, move immediately into the banded good morning. Now these are actually really fucking legit. And I think I'm gonna start doing them on a regular basis in my own training program, to be honest. I've done them a few times at this point, but I think I'm gonna start doing them consistently now because the bands really change the movement here to a point where just holding posture up top is actually a massive strain on the glutes so that you don't get pulled down and pulled forward by the bands. But 
the posterior chain as a whole actually gets really lit up with this surprisingly I mean, even more so than you would think that it would and if you add some additional weight in your hands that's also very helpful because the bands don't do a, that much for you at the bottom of half of the movement they hit the hamstrings but not that much. So adding a little bit of weight is really helpful. But you can also really load up the band tension on this exercise more than you would think that you could. And as such, the hamstring and the glute activation gets cranked up really damn high, especially during that top half. So for this, I like to just focus on getting a good hamstring stretch as I descend, which obviously having those extra weights in my hand is helpful here, like I said, and then flex the glutes up hard at the top and just knock out a bunch of clean reps here. After you finish the set, you can rest for a minute and then move into the next round. And next up is session three, which is upper body session two. You'll kick this one off with the plyo push up again, but this time you'll do the reps from a dead stop position at the very bottom of the rep, which is substantially more difficult than the rhythmic one. You won't be able to press yourself nearly as high off the ground like this as you could with the variation earlier in the week. So for this, you move to the bottom of the push up. Pause for two to three seconds, and then explode up as high as you can. Catch yourself, allow the momentum to carry you back to the bottom of the push-up again, pause there again, and then explode. Repeat for six to eight reps, or until you begin to lose explosiveness and lose power. After the plyo push-ups, you'll do a pairing of close grip weighted push-ups paired up with dead hang chin-ups. Now, for the close grip push-ups, just use a grip width that you would use for a close grip bench press or maybe a tiny bit narrower. For this one, you want to pause in the bottom for one to two seconds on every rep and then press yourself explosively back up to the top. As you can see, I'm on my knuckles here. I find that a lot more comfortable than putting my hands flat on the floor, but if you have push-up handles available, those would be a fantastic option here as well. Either way, knock out as many clean reps as you can here. There's nothing wrong with going to failure on an exercise like this. It's not going to fucking kill your nervous system or anything like that. But between the close grip, the pauses, and the extra weight on your back, don't actually expect to be knocking out any insane amount of reps on this exercise anyway. It's actually pretty deceptively difficult when performed like this. But if you really need more resistance, you can also add a light base and to complement the weight plate on your back. Now for the chin up, you'll do the exact same thing as the push up. Five sets of as many clean reps as possible. And this time, you'll use your normal chin up grip instead of a close grip. So you should be a little bit stronger that way. So this time, you'll want to be sure to add a little bit of extra weight to the exercise if you need it. If you can only do maybe 10 chin ups anyway, then you probably want to hold off on adding the weight for now. Either way, perform every rep from a dead hang in the bottom position this time. Make sure you reach a full extension. I want the lats to get a good stretch in the bottom. Do a quick three count in your head and then move into the next rep. For the face pull and the hammer curl, you'll perform alternating sets. Now here, the goal is just to reach a total rep count. You'll want to work nearly to failure on the face pull and then switch to the hammer curl and do the same thing. Rinse, wash, and repeat until you get to at least 100 reps each. You could bump this up to 150 or maybe even 200 if you're crazy. But for these exercises, the loading is really inconsequential. We're just trying to work the upper back and work the biceps and work the full Forearm. So just focus on feeling those muscles do the work. You can shorten the rest times and exaggerate the eccentric phase here to make these exercises a little bit harder as you move through the program. And finally, session four. And this one is my favorite of all because here we finally get to sprint. But you're gonna start off with some jumps first. Now this time we'll do lunge jumps. Here you wanna focus on exploding vertically as high as possible, do a little scissor kick in the air, and then move rhythmically into the next rep with the other leg. Remember, be as explosive as possible with every rep here and be sure to rest a couple minutes in between sets so that you stay fresh. Perform five total sets, five jumps per leg on each set, so 10 total jumps. And after a few weeks, you can experiment with adding a small amount of weight to this exercise if you think it's necessary. 
And then next up is the sprint. Now here it's tough to give hard line recommendations because this is gonna be a very individualized thing. The important points to note here are that you wanna break yourself in adequately and you want to rest a long time in between sets. Now to break yourself in, just start slow, right? Start off with a jog if you have to, I don't fucking care. And then push just a tiny little bit harder each week until eventually you're going all out. You can do this over the course of six to eight weeks or 10 weeks, I really don't care. There's no shame in it. But if you haven't sprinted in a while, you will tweak something if you aren't careful. So be careful. Like I said earlier though, everyone should be able to sprint without worry or issue. If you're below the age of fucking 50 and you can't run, then that is honestly a problem and you should work on it. You are not not fit if you can't run. I don't care what else you can do. Now for these sprints, you can run on flat ground, you can run up hills, or you can run up stairs. And feel free to rotate through all these modalities if you have a good hill or good stairs nearby. And other than that, once you become proficient, you'll wanna vary the distances as well. You can do short sprints of 20 to 40 yards for a few weeks, then you can move into 80 or 100 meter sprints for a few weeks, and then you can move into 200 or even 300 meter runs as well. And then go back to the short stuff again after that. The longer the sprints, the longer you need to rest in between sets. Remember that. The rule of thumb here is one minute of rest for every 10 meters sprinted. So, for example, if you're running 100 meters that day, you should be resting approximately 10 minutes. I know that sounds like a long time, but 10 minutes in between runs in order to stay fresh and explosive and avoid injury. Either way, be sure to start off with just a couple runs here at first as you break yourself in and then slowly increase the volume as your work capacity increases. And then after the sprints, you might as well wrap things up with some walking lunges since you're already outside anyway, right? For these, no weight is required. Just do three sets of as many clean reps as possible. That might be 20 or 30 or even 40 reps per leg, depending on how strong you are at the moment. Rest for a minute or two and then hit it again. Now these are gonna burn, but they'll basically guarantee that you don't lose any leg size and your legs might actually get bigger from this as well so don't fucking skimp here and that pretty much covers it guys there's a lot to digest here but this program really isn't too shabby so when your gym inevitably closes again this fall be sure to check it out and consider giving it a shot. Even if you're an advanced trainee, I can guarantee you there is something here that is going to be very challenging and very beneficial for you. Some of this stuff is actually deceptively difficult. I'm not going to lie. And the heavy bands really go a long way towards increasing the value of the push-ups especially, but also the good morning. So anyway, if you need a home workout plan, then be sure to bookmark this one right here. And if you know a friend who needs one, then be sure to send this video on on over to them as well. And that is all I got for today, guys. Please be sure to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. Keep training hard and I'll catch you guys next time.